action. We've got some screwed up dynamics. Right now, for example, there are more boy virgins 25 and under than there are girl virgins. There are more boys who stay at home with a parent 30 years of age and under, 35 and under than there are girls. Only 44% of the American workforce is male. Only 28% of each year's high school graduates for the last 20 some years are male. Only 32% of the college undergrads are male. Only 36% of the grad students are male. Something's happening. Something is happening. Right now in America, it's almost illegal to be a man. If you want to use your muscles or use your brain to think like a man, you might get convicted of a crime. Or if you don't get convicted of a crime, it's going to be a social crime because they say, oh, that's toxic masculinity. Oh, that man is being abusive. It's abusive to be powerful in America right now. Now, if you have a woman and she says she's transitioning to be a man, then all of society is going to clap for that person and say, you go, girl. That's girl power. But when you have actual man power, men choosing to be masculine people and to have their traditional roles in our society, that's frowned upon. I'm going to tell you a story. About 12 years ago, my oldest son was five years old. Now, when his mother, my ex-wife, was in the kitchen, she'll be cooking or doing whatever chores she was doing in the house, I might just walk behind her and just smack her on the booty. It might just happen like that. And so my little son, he would just laugh. His eyes would light up. He was saying, Daddy's so crazy. Well, he was in kindergarten at the time. And one day, I get a call from the school. And the school calls me up to the school, asking what's going on. They won't tell me over the phone. They won't talk to me on the phone. So I go to the schoolhouse. What does the school tell me? My son went to a little girl, and he smacked on her booty. And I'm not telling any man to do this. No child should go smack a girl on the booty. It's wrong. So my, they tell me that that's what my son did. My son was emulating my behavior, and he did this thing at school. You know what the school told me? They didn't say about, no, uh, we're going to send him to detention. We ain't going to put him in the corner. No. They said they're going to convict my little son, my five-year-old son, of a felony crime, an assault charge. I said, how in the world does a five-year-old baby get hit with an assault charge while he's in kindergarten? This was the thinking that was coming from a public school, Houston Independent School District. And so I was so sad because, number one, he was acting like his father. And number two, I didn't want my son to be convicted of no felony. So when we got home, I spanked him. I spanked my son for him doing the exact same thing that his daddy did. And that broke my heart. To this day, I'm so upset that I did that. But the pressure of the system to tell a little boy who's emulating his father, a father who's loving on his mother, that you cannot have that behavior. Do you know how much courage it takes right now in the dating scene? Because all the numbers are in. So many men are single and lonely because how are you supposed to, how can you approach a woman in this society when approaching a woman can be seen as a crime? If I go and talk at the workplace is normally when you get to meet people, right? Like proximity is how you have access to a woman. And so if you're at work and you see your coworker and you think that she's pretty and you would like to take her on a date and you ask her, hey, coworker, do you want to go on a date with me? She can go straight to HR and tell HR that you was harassing her. Then all of a sudden you lose your job because you want to have a relationship with a person you thought was pretty. We are outlawing masculinity. It is a crime to be a man in America and men won't stand up and fight for each other. We will not fight for each other. Why is that? Because the most powerful men in our society right now, the top 20% of men, they have access to all the women. And so if the law benefits me to have all the women I want, if you're in the top 20%, if you look good, talk good, fight good, right? If you got a little bit of money in your pocket, then when you approach a woman, she's so happy. She's elated that you're talking to her. She's not going to tell HR that, that you're harassing her. No, she's going to take you to the break room and give you some of that sweet cookie. <laughs> cookie in the break room is the best. And I ain't talking about no snack. But this is the disparity that's happening right now in America the top 20% of men get all the spoils of war and the 80 by the bottom 80% of men, they just looking up like, how can I ever get a date? How can I ever get a woman? It takes so much courage to be a man in America. America needs dumb men. Why does America need dumb men? You need 18 year old boys to sign up to go to war, right? Huh? You got to be 18 years old to say, I go to war. Give me a few hundred dollars a month and I'm willing to sacrifice my life. You need dumb men in America to go to the oil fields. I go to the oil fields and be a roughneck and turn that big old heavy wrench so I can make some dollars. I will sacrifice my body so I can go make some money. You need dumb men in America. Why do you need dumb men in America? Because I'm willing to give my entire life to a family. Hi, girl. You want to have a baby? I'll go to work every day for 80 hours a week just so I can provide for my family. That's what men do. 
That's the traditional role of men in America. But for some reason, American society does not want to appreciate that. They're depreciating what it means to be a man. The, tra the, the traditional roles of men being powerful is being outlawed. The only way that we can combat this is to just go ahead and be men, to be fully strong, masculine men, to use our muscles, to think like a man, to fight like a man, and to stand up against this oppressive system. I guarantee you, if 10 million men stood up and said, we're not going to take it, legislation will change. There is nothing in, there's nothing in the whole entire world like actual power not perceived power legislation is perceived power someone writes a law and you abide by the law because you know you don't want to get in trouble now when actual people when actual men stand up 10 million men strong and you go to your legislator i'm from texas there's a, a white man who made a song talking about the rich men north of richmond well the rich men up there in texas were passing these laws when a, when texas men stand up and go to austin and say hey you're gonna change these laws I'm going to be a man, I'm going to talk like a man, I'm going to fight like a man, be strong like a man, and you can't stop me. Guess what? They can't stop you. When 10 million men across the nation stand up and fight back for masculinity, then guess what? Masculinity wins. The men will win. That's actual power. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.